Hello from San Antonio, this is Siren Tayro. Welcome back to another Pick a Card reading. Who can't stop thinking about you? This reading is timeless. And before I start the video, I wanted to give a shout out, not a paid sponsorship, but I just received this candle from Etsy and it's gorgeous. Be calm. The company, the shop is Mystica Earth. Wrote it down on my ramen notepad, Mystica Earth Co. Be calm, anxiety relief candle. <clears throat> Infused with amethyst, clear quartz, lavender, sweet orange, geranium, lemongrass, blueberry, maple, and forget me not. Hand poured in West Virginia. And it smells amazing. So if you would like for me to give a shout out to your Etsy shop on the channel, I'm open to that. You can contact me. Okay. There are four different options for this timeless reading. This is option one, Venus, Beloved. These cards are from the Star Codes Astro Oracle. Option two, Third House, Communication. Option three, Moon, Perception. And Quattro, option four, Ascendant, Entrance. As always, timestamps will be provided. Take a deep breath and make your selection. If you chose the first card, here is your reading. Venus, Beloved, 21, that's three, Jupiter, Sagittarius. So maybe you or your person of interest has Venus in Sagittarius. I will call out a possible astral combo for the person who can't stop thinking about you once I have all the cards down. The Crow Tarot. Three. Three of Swords, Thrace de Espadas. And the Nine of Cups, Nueve de Copas. Two of Pentacles, those the Oros. Can't recall the name of this deck. I don't use it often. Chariot, El Carro. That has to be the Page of Cups. Yeah. Don't the knights always have horses? Looks like a knight, but so do the Copas. And then, <clears throat> so do the Espadas. Let me just go through this deck real quick. Because I don't like that. That's why I tend to stick to the same decks. Okay. I like for my readings to be no nonsense, straight to the point. Um, that's the hanged man. Yeah, that's a knight. So the knight's... <clears throat> There's a horse there. Yeah, that's the Knight of Wands. Okay. Got to clear the throat chakra. <clears throat> okay.
okay, this person who can't stop thinking about you, um, it looks like it is pretty much a mutual exchange of energy, meaning it's not just one person doing all the heavy lifting. It's not just one person doing all the work. It's a pretty even, consistent flow of communication. But I see some caution here. Um, and I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why there is this caution. Um, because I see you communicating quite a lot. But I think this person is holding back. They're not really fully committing to this connection. You're not really having these long, in-depth conversations. It's a lot of flirting, um, fun communication, not sexting necessarily, although you could be sexting. It's more lighthearted, um, it's like two friends who are appreciating each other on Instagram, for instance. You could have something in common like music, poetry, art. You have something significant in common. And so I'm really seeing a friendship here. You're just starting to get to know each other. You've not really gotten to the romantic sexual point yet. And I feel like it could be because this person's still in a relationship. They could be going through a divorce maybe, or they could be energetically attached to an ex. They're still thinking of an ex a lot. And so they can't really offer you anything at this time. It's kind of contradictory who can't stop thinking about you. But I see this person thinking a lot of an ex. They like you, they like the energy they have exchanged with you, but they don't really know you yet. You don't really know them. Maybe you both sense tremendous potential and you're just being careful. You're not rushing in to anything. Um, this person could be a single parent. I feel like they are busy. They do have a lot of responsibilities and cancer is strong in their chart or they could have a moon that makes a lot of aspects. So one possible astral combo for this person, they could have sun and cancer, Gemini rising, moon and Virgo. That's just one possibility of many. Um, you could have sun and Pisces, Aquarius rising, Moon and Taurus. I'm going to do an energetic summation for this person. I'm just curious. This person who is showing up in pile one, please provide an energetic summation. What are they going through right now? Just a quick summation of this person's energy in three cards. Do a good hard shuffle. Queen of Swords, Reina de Espadas, the Hanged Man, El Clagado, and Four of Wands, got the Bastos. Okay, yeah, this person is not trying to rush into a new relationship there is still stuff with an ex or soon to be ex and it's not resolved there's this unresolved energy um i really feel like right now they see you as a friend i'm not seeing much sexual energy here I wouldn't say this person is currently in love with you, 
they feel better when they communicate with you. I feel like you make this person laugh, but the last thing they want right now is a rebound relationship. Um, they don't want to rush in because there's no point in that. If they were to rush into a new relationship, it would just crash and burn because there is unresolved stuff with an ex or soon to be ex. And this is someone they probably have at least one child with. So they're in the hanged man energy, meaning they're not taking any action. So they could be thinking of you. They probably smile when they do think of you. I don't feel like you and this person have any toxic history. This is like a fresh, fun friendship. You've just started talking. You don't really know each other that well yet. That's what I see for pile one. I hope that helps. I'm always available for private readings. All the info's in the box. Check out Patreon for additional card readings, vlogs, astrology rambles, um, tarot videos, tarot tutorials, etc. Which is gracias. And if you chose card number two, third house, communication, and that is synchronous. I don't know, maybe it was planned, but um, four and one, that's five. Five is the number of Mercury, which rules Gemini and Virgo in the system that I use, which is detailed in Linda Goodman's Star Signs, a book I've been referencing since the 80s when I was a teenager. Who can't stop thinking about you? Crow Tarot. Two of Wands, those the Bastos. Ace of Cups, Ostacopas. Knight of Pentacles, Caballo de Oros. I cannot recall the name of this very popular deck. I don't use it often. Two of Cups, those the Copas. Five of Swords, Cinco de Espadas, and the High Priestess, La Sacerdotisa. Okay, this person who can't stop thinking about you, I would say just based on these cards that this person is currently in love with you. And similar to Pile 1, they could have strong cancer in their natal chart or they could have a moon that makes a fuck ton of aspects because we have two twos in the first row. Two is the number of cancer. And then we have the high priestess, a cancer card. Um, yes, usual caveat. This is a pick a card reading. I'm reading for a global audience. It's not a personal reading. It's your story or no, not at all. You know when someone's in love with you. It's like I say all the time. I tell clients this all the time. Your common sense and your intuition trump any tarot reading. I don't care how good the reader is. Nothing trumps your common sense and your intuition. So this person could currently be in love with you. That is quite strong to have two of cups and ace of cups in a very minimal six card spread. Okay. Uh, possible astro combo for this person. They could be a few years younger than you. They could have Sun and Cancer, Gemini rising, Moon and Gemini. This person is adept at communication. They're very good at expressing their thoughts, opinions, feelings. They could be quite visible on social media. They could be really active on Twitter. I mean, X. They could be blazing their path to glory on X. Um, strong political opinions and beliefs. 
I'm seeing Blair White. I've really gotten into Blair White's videos lately. She's in Austin. Um, I'm getting red pill, not blue pill. Uh, Republican, conservative, probably a gun owner. Um, yeah. If this is a man, I'm seeing a traditional Texas kind of guy, the typical native Texan. So he's got guns, he's got a truck, um, he likes his beer, he likes his Dallas Cowboys. He probably played sports in high school, he's probably on the football team. Um, he's probably kicked some ass, he's gotten into a few fights in his time. Uh, he's really intense when it comes to relationships. He requires fidelity, monogamy. He's not going to be okay with you talking to other people. He could be jealous, possessive. Regardless of this person's gender, that's just what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a very traditional masculine person. I'm seeing a man, but take whatever resonates. Um, Regardless, this person is really intense when it comes to relationships. I feel like there is a wound. Maybe the first person they really fell in love with cheated on them. And so they always have their antenna up. And if you're on social media a lot, if you're really flirtatious, I can see this person being jealous. Um, I feel like you and this person have probably gotten into at least a couple of arguments. There may have been some blocking, unblocking here. Uh, this person has a really strong personality. Okay, probably an extrovert. Um, they have friends that they've had for years, friends they've had since high school or hell, elementary school. I feel like they've, pro they've probably stayed in the same environment all their life. Like if they were born in Fort Worth, Texas, they're still in Fort Worth, Texas. They like to be close to their friends they've known for years and their family. Very family oriented, very traditional. They like the holidays. They like Thanksgiving. I'm seeing Thanksgiving because food, this person loves to eat and they love to drink and they love to be around friends and family and they love to watch football. I don't usually get that specific with a pick a card. That's what I'm picking up. That's what I'm seeing. So yeah, um, Brian, that name just popped into my head. I don't call out names in every pick a card reading that I do, but if a name pops into my head, I just go with it. So Brian and a last name that starts with an R. Uh, Brian Reynolds, oh, it rhymes with Brian Reynolds. Brian Reynolds, um, my maiden name, my last name is Rainwater. Brian Rainwater, I don't know a Brian Rainwater. I don't have any relatives named Brian. Uh, I don't know, just fill it in. The initials could be BR for this person. And I'm seeing a bear, probably because we took my son to his um, new high school yesterday for registration. That's the mascot. But yeah, that's what I see for pile two. I hope that helps, entertains, educates, elucidates. I'm always available for private readings. I do this full time. I've got a Patreon that's just rocking and rolling. Uh, Extra Basic Tarot finally made it to a thousand subscribers. So go to Extra Basic Tarot if you're so inclined for basic bitch zodiac readings. Thanks for watching. Peace out. And if you chose card number three, moon, perception, and that's funny because one nine is 10, one, Leo, the sun. 
There are different numerological systems. I use the system that's detailed in Linda Goodman's Star Signs, a book I've been referencing since the 80s when I was a teenager. Okay. Who can't stop thinking about you? The Crow Tarot. And that's funny, the moon is jumping out for all three piles, all three piles so far. So I'm getting cancer vibes. Or if you, or this person, I'll call out a possible astral combo when all the cards are down. But if you and this person don't have a lot of cancer in your chart, um, one or both of you could have a moon that makes a fuck ton of aspects. Like I always, until I really got into astrology deep, until I dove into all the different layers, I couldn't figure out why I didn't have any water in my chart. I mean, I have Neptune and Sagittarius in the fourth, it's a house of Cancer, and I have Mercury and Pisces, but that's it. Scorpio, I see, Cancer, South Node. Um, but then when I got deeper into astrology, I found out that... Uh, my moon is a lot more powerful in my chart than my sun because my sun's at the anoretic degree, 29 degrees Aquarius, doesn't make many aspects. My moon in Virgo, it's in the first house. It's conjunct my ascendant and it makes a fuck ton of aspects. So strong moon vibes. You gotta go deep with astrology. You gotta go beyond the sun sign, the moon sign and the ascendant if you care. And I do care. I'm invested. I've been studying since I was a teenager, but I didn't get really deep into astrology until 2014. That's Saturn, King of Swords. And there's all kinds of opinions on astrology. Rada Spadas. Um, some astrologers, I'm not an astrologer, I'm a student, but some astrologers, they only go by the traditional ruler. So Saturn is the traditional ruler of Aquarius. I go by the new ruler. So Uranus for Aquarius, Neptune for Pisces, uh, Pluto for Scorpio. That's so controversial. Pluto's not a planet. Oh, I, I kind of tend to think that it is. Three of Cups, Tres de Copas, The Hanged Man, El Cogato. I forget what this deck is called. It's popular. I don't use it that often. But yeah, definitely Pluto for Scorpio, not Mars. Looking at the stove clock, it's 101. Make a wish. That's two. Cancer, the moon. Two of swords. Those this spot is. So timeless reading, but as I record this, yesterday was Lionsgate. Did anything revelatory or ash shaking, brain quaking happen to anyone on Lionsgate? Did you manifest anything particularly exciting? Six of Pentacles says the Oros. And that would be the Knight of Cups, Caballo de Copas. I was pissed because I wanted sweet tarts and I got asparagus. So I totally indulged my inner child. Late last night, I went to Amazon Fresh and ordered two dills of sweet tarts and a bag of fun-sized Milky Ways. And to add insult to injury, oatmeal cookies. <laughs> okay, who can't stop thinking about you? This person could have Sun in Cancer, Pisces rising, Moon in Taurus. I feel like their energy is quite feminine, meaning water and earth. Although we start, we start with King of Swords. Okay, if this person has Sun in Cancer, they could have Mercury in Gemini. Mercury is always in the same sign as your Sun or the sign before or after. Um, I'm seeing a really strong, solid friendship as a basis, okay? You make this person laugh, 
they feel better communicating with you. They feel better when they think about you. This is not especially lusty. I'm not seeing sexting. Um, I feel like this person is careful with you. I feel like they respect you too much to just send you a picture of their dick. If this is a man, he's not going to just slide into the DMs and say, take a look at this baby. No, this person's not sleazy. Uh, they don't lead with their libido. Let's just put it like that. This person is a romantic. They are thoughtful. They are highly intelligent and they have a lot of respect for you. So no dick pics. They want to actually get to know you as a person. Uh, they don't want to just see you as, um, they don't see you as master potato. Master, I'm trying to cram too much in. They don't see you as masturbation material, okay? There are magazines and websites for that, you know, and there's the imagination. You can imagine people you were with before, whatever. Uh, they don't see you as masturbation material. Your energy is probably not overtly sexual, so I've gone on the rabbit hole lately. I don't know why. I've got a lot of time on my hands. I've been watching a lot of Rock of Love episodes. Specifically, the episodes that I'm really drawn to are from season three, Rock of Love, the tour bus. And I just think it's it's gross in general. I mean, it's reality TV. It's, it's trash. But um, the whole premise is gross, that this aging rock star who peaked in the 80s is having all these women competing for his attention in a really cheesy, sleazy way. So some of the women on the show are a lot more overtly sexual than others. Uh, well, the one who won, um, Taya, Taya won season three. She liked to remind everyone on a regular basis that she was a penthouse pet. So you probably are not overtly sexual. You're not a Taya type. You're a lot more subdued. Um, maybe you've not had any plastic surgery. Maybe you've never posed for a penthouse or Playboy or OnlyFans, I don't know. But you're probably an introvert and Actually, I see you both probably being introverts, you and this person who can't stop thinking about you. So <clears throat> their thoughts are not especially sexual. They're more romantic. Uh, this person's probably a sapiosexual. They fall in love with minds. And they like your mind. I feel like they do regard you as an equal. This person is in no rush to get heavy, deep, intense with you. They're enjoying the process. They're enjoying getting to know you. Uh, you probably have similar taste in music, art, movies. I can see you and this person someday maybe walking through an art museum together, holding hands. I can see you at a concert together. I can see this person playing the guitar for you. So, yeah, that is what is up with Pile 3. I hope that helps, entertains, educates, elucidates. I'm always available for private readings. All the info's in every box. I've got Patreon, OnlyFans, joking. I don't have an OnlyFans. That's not going to happen. Um, extra basic tarot for basic bitch. Zodiac readings, muchas gracias. And if you chose Quattro, card number four, Ascendant, Entrance, three, five, 35. That's eight, Capricorn, Saturn. Looking at the stove clock, it's 108 p.m. San Antonio, Texas, one and eight, that's nine, Mars, Aries. I'll call out a possible astral combo when all the cards are down, but perhaps the person who can't stop thinking about you has Capricorn rising, or maybe you do. The Crow Tarot.
What are you trying so hard to be? I am the Five of Pentacles, bitch. Cinco de Oros. You could be more straightforward about it. That's just a weird card. But yeah, Five of Pentacles, Cinco de Oros. Okay. Ace of Pentacles, Os de Oros, and the Tower, La Torre. This person who can't stop thinking about you, I feel like they are struggling financially. They could be couch surfing, could be spending some time in mom's basement, um, payday loans, pawn shop, coin star, EBT. I forget what this deck is called. It's popular. I rarely use it. That is the Queen of Swords, Reina de Espadas. That's a Six of Swords, Ace de Espadas. And that's the Knight of Swords, Caballo de Espadas. So this is long distance. You're not in the same city. You're probably on, I mean, you could be. You could be on different continents. So this person could be in... Whenever I say that, whenever I say different continents, for some reason I always go to Tokyo right away. So let's think of something besides Tokyo. Um, this person could be in Barcelona. You could be in Encino, Encino, California. But I'm seeing distance and an age gap. Uh, you could be a few years older, but yeah, I see this person struggling financially. And that's a problem because they can't just get on a plane and come to wherever you are and they can't buy you a ticket to come to them. Could you buy a ticket to go to them? Maybe you could. I don't know what's going on here. I'm seeing a long distance relationship. I'm seeing instability financial instability, and perhaps emotional as well. Um, I know the times in my life when I've really been struggling financially, that affects my emotions. I don't like to be making the track to Coinstar. I didn't like being on food stamps the two times in my life that I was on food stamps. Um, I didn't like it when I was sharing a single bed with the spring sticking up with my boyfriend at the time who became my second husband, my son's father. And we were ecstatic when we had enough money to go to the convenience store and buy a bag of flaming hot Cheetos. That was a party. So yeah, it sucks being broke. And that's absolutely going to affect your state of mind and your relationships. So, this person wishes they could offer you something, but right now they can't. If this is a man and you're a woman, they feel like shit because they can't offer you a home. They can't provide for you at this time. Um, maybe you're both struggling financially and they hate that they can't help you. They hate that... They can't manifest two tickets to Fiji uh, because they feel like you deserve that. You deserve a Fiji vacation. They love the idea of making love to you on a white sand beach. They love the idea of making love to you in a five-star resort, but it's not like that. It can't be that way for the foreseeable future. A possible astro combo for this person. They could have Sun and Libra, Capricorn rising, Moon and Aries, one possibility of many. You could have Sun and Aquarius, Capricorn rising, Moon and Libra. I feel like there's a lot of potential between the two of you. But right now, I see two people who are struggling. I'm going to go ahead and do an energetic summation. Please provide an energetic summation, traditional cards. What's going on with this person? 
three additional cards. There is love here. Six, Venus, and I'm looking at the stove clock, 1.14 p.m. San Antonio, Texas. 1.14, that's six. Save all your love. Save all your love for me. When I'm alone at night, you are. I see. Hmm. Yeah, that's the King of Cups. Way to Copas. This person is struggling with depression. The High Priestess, La Sacerdotisa. I'm seeing major depression. King of Wands, Ray de Bastos. Right now, this person is not in King of Wands energy. They don't feel like they don't feel like they have any power whatsoever over their own life. They don't feel like they can create a better life for themselves. This person is feeling trapped. They're feeling small. They're feeling powerless. They're feeling like they're a victim of circumstance. And it sucks. They hate it. They want to create a better life. They want to be able to spoil you. You deserve that. For a lot of you who chose Pile 4, I would say this person is currently in love with you. So yeah, that's what I have for Pile 4, and that does conclude this pick-a-card reading. Thank you all so much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. Sending you all massive love and light from San Antonio.